guys, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, open the state from here. Um, got back in the wind column tonight, uh, first game in nearly a month, so just going to talk about start to finish, how did it feel out there for you, not only to be playing, but to be playing close to, uh, close to New Mexico once again? Yeah, it felt great to be on the sideline again and competing. And uh, I think our kids were overjoyed with the uh, opportunity to play college basketball. So we've played one game since December 1st. Count the days up. That's a lot of days without playing a game. Uh, that's got to be, uh, um, for this season, close to the longest um, games per play, you know, in that span of days. So, um, and this was uh, tenuous up until a few hours before. It almost didn't come to fruition for a number of different factors. Um, you know, we were in shoot around, really doing our normal shoot around. And then um, Coach Miller was on the side going back and forth on the phone. I knew it wasn't good, but fortunately uh, with, with Mario and Braun's help, they were able to uh, make certain that it happened. So um, that would have been a tough one to swallow because we've had so many of those situations, but it felt great to be back in the court. Um, you know, our kids, I think uh, felt, felt I can't speak for them, but it felt good to be out there too. I guess just the important, um, you know, coming out, um, I'm sure the legs were a little shaky for the guys early on, but how did you feel like they kind of um, were able to kind of get their legs as the game went on? Yeah, I don't know if it was their legs. I don't know if it was, we're not in great shape. I don't know if it was rust. I don't know if it was number of factors that we could point to, but uh, we certainly weren't in any sort of rhythm, especially offensively early. It was a real struggle for us to, to run good offense, uh, let alone make a basket. Uh, that was frustrating. You know, certainly you can always use the excuses. They're there if you want to, but that was frustrating. I, I thought we'd uh, open better. I thought we'd come out of the gates with a little more umph, if you will, and uh, we just didn't. Uh, as the game progressed, I, I think it was probably more just us being – bigger, stronger, faster than them, um, more than anything else. But um, that was disappointing. Um, but at the same time, I didn't know exactly what to expect. I just know we needed to play a basketball game. We needed to get guys on the court with officials, et cetera. I guess just it, Wilfred tonight, I think 20 and six. Uh, what'd you think of Wilfred's play? Yeah, I'm happy for Wilfred. You know, I told him the other day that he was really making strides. He was one guy that changed you know he, he always he always asked for change from all your players but especially the new guys and it's really fun for a coach when that light starts flickering and, and they get it and and he's been one of those guys that's uh, been coming and just getting more comfortable with the expectations that we have getting more comfortable with how we think he needs to play for him to be productive and for him to get it on the floor tonight will hopefully really boost his confidence. But as a staff, we've been excited about him in the recent weeks um, when, when we've been on the floor um, because of his uh, approach to practice and um, his, his ability um, to play on both ends of the floor and um, certainly had a height advantage a lot around the basket. Um, tonight, which uh, he took advantage of, but that's not Wolfer's fault. He doesn't choose who he's playing against. So um, I think this was a really good game for him, and, and hopefully it'll springboard him. Coach, can you hear me a little bit better? Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Uh, college day. Uh, I'm sorry, Justin. I, I I hit about one every four or five words when you do it. It's, it's, it's reverberates for everybody, but yours is is real strong. You hear him, Charlie? Text Charlie the question and I'll answer it. Improvise. Yeah, right. Uh, if it means anything, Coach, I can't hear his questions either. I can hear everybody else except his. So I don't know if it's something I'll then. So you see how Gerald Dokes tonight, Coach? Yeah, you know, Gerald Dokes is. Um, a good player. I mean, everyone that knows basketball isn't hard to figure out that he's got talent, you know, and that's a good place to start for any college basketball player. And he joined us on the fly. I, I've never experienced anything like this before. I've had plenty of players that became eligible at Christmas, but they usually practiced either for a semester or a year up until that time when they became eligible. But 
you know, he, he came in from, from a prep school situation into a division one and became eligible during the Christmas break. And, um, you know, it's just kind of throw him in trial by fire, I guess, and throw him in the deep end and see if he can swim. And um, but this was a wonderful situation for us and for him to throw him out there and see where he was at. And, you know, he has no clue about our system and, and how could he, you know, we're trying to fast track it as best we can. Um, you know, he's way behind in that regard, but, um, you know, we're just going to try to uh, get him up to speed and, and hopefully he's a fast learner. But um, I think at some point he's going to be a really good basketball player for us. I don't know when that's going to be. Certainly, you know, we all love it for it to be right away, but he's talented. You know, he gets off the ground on his jump shot in an old school way. He's got uh, quick twitch muscle and He's, he's quick defensively. He doesn't really know what's going on in terms of how to defend yet. Um, he's obviously a little thin, but he's got the right approach, the right attitude, very good athlete, and, and he's really blended well with our guys so far. Our guys do an excellent job of bringing people into the basketball family that we've created, but um, he's got a bright, bright future for sure. Coach, were you trying to use your full court pressure a little bit in the second half to, to get things going a little bit for you? You know, I, um, I don't know if it was much that you give me too much credit. It was more to uh, just take a look at it. You know, we just want to take a look at it and you know, see if it's something that we can maybe employ in the future. You know, we, we, we've used it in the past at different times with different teams. Uh, again, you know, our length, um, athleticism, et cetera, makes it uh, easy to press, you know, a team like that for us. Can we do it against a team, you know, that looks like us, you know, that, that remains to be seen. But it certainly changed the tempo of the game, that's for sure. We got some, some quick turnovers, and it got us up and down the court and got us in transition more, which is what we need to do. Was this, in a season full of bizarre events, was playing on UTEP's home court as the home team, is that the most bizarre win of the year for you guys so far? Unfortunately, no. Uh, I wouldn't rank that in the top three or four, to be honest with you. Um, just being frank with you, it, it really wasn't that odd to me. I, I didn't think twice about it. I never commented to any other coaches that, you know, this is weird or this is surreal. I mean, we played over here, you know, almost a handful of times already. And um, we, you know, it's been a, just a very surreal and, and odd season with, uh, our travels and travails and uh, what we've been going through. So, you know, playing over here was, it doesn't rank nearly as high as you would expect it to. On a normal season, it would probably feel a little odd, but um, for what we're all going through, um, that, that doesn't rank that high, uh, at least for me anyway. Coach, just one quick question. So you had a lot of guys that you could not play. Um, you don't have to go through each one of them. Is there a target date as to when you make all of them back? or around a, a certain time? You know, each one is different. Unfortunately, the injury bug has bit us pretty hard uh, this season. Uh, you know, add that along with the relocation of COVID and it's a, uh, you know, a raise your eyebrows type of situation. Um, but they're all different. Some are, are short-term, uh, some are long-term. Um, you know, it's tough. That was a short bench. I didn't have to walk very far to see what we had to put in the game. And I kept turning around looking for more guys in jerseys. And all I saw were guys in, uh, you know, polos or quarter zips that obviously can't play dead. So that was a little frustrating for me as the guy that puts them in the game, not to have many options. But um, it, it is what it is. The second year in a row, you know, we've had the injury bug. And uh, it's just bad luck. It's bad luck. And it's certainly affecting us. And um, But we're just, you know, we're just going to keep trudging forward. And we're going to keep trying to get better. Obviously, you know, we're going to enter WAC play here Friday. Uh, you know, we've been outside looking in, you know, the WAC or the basketball season is not waiting for us. So we've got to jump in head first and go down to Grand Canyon and, and play, a, you know, an unbelievable basketball team. I mean, they're really, really good. I don't see many weaknesses in them. Uh, Coach Drew and his staff have walked in and done an excellent job of making that program theirs and putting their stamp on it right away. And, uh, we'll have more than our hands full to try to figure out how to, to play against those guys because they got they got everything you need to be a, a really good basketball team. So uh, it'll be a heck of a challenge for us. Thanks, Coach. You bet. I guess on that uh, on that note, do you feel like you're ready for whack play? I mean, it's, 
uh, you've only played once in 55 days or twice now, but do you feel like you guys are ready? I mean, to be brutally honest with you, no, we're not. But we don't have a choice. Um, you know, we, we'd love to play three or four more games. You know, then I think we'd probably be in a better position to, to play, you know, conference race type of games, especially having to open on the road, you know, at, at a team that's already got four road wins under their belt. And the only losses they've had are, you know, against Colorado was really good and Arizona State. Um, and then the other loss they had was, um, can't even remember, San Francisco maybe, um, who's a really good basketball team this year too. So um, we're not, but, you know, uh, it is what it is. And we're going to do the best job we can. Uh, we got three more days to prepare um, for, for the back-to-back. -back. And, you know, we were trying to get back-to-back -back games uh, all fall to get a feel for what that would feel like for our staff, for our players, um, you know, how much wear and tear to play back to back against the same team more mentally than physically. And, you know, how do you approach that situation strategically, et cetera. And, you know, that, that doesn't help either. It would have been really nice to be able to play uh, one of those type of series before we had to play seven of them uh, in the next seven weeks, but um, we'll have to figure it out on the fly. Justin, have a question. Okay. Cool. Good. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Right, yeah. Sorry about. The, sorry about the reverberations. I don't know. Blame it on Charlie. All good. Good to see you guys back on the court. Thanks.